Does using DLSS increase input latency? Well, let's find out. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we are answering a question that lots of you guys have been asking us over the last couple of months. Specifically, in our last Q&A session from August, we got a question from Brett H wondering whether there is any latency from DLSS that results in greater levels of input lag. And that at the time, we didn't really have a solid answer for Brett, but I promised I'd check it out and, well, here we are today with the results of that investigation. So at this point, we've covered NVIDIA's DLSS technology on the channel a number of times, and starting with version 2.0, we've been very impressed with the benefits it brings to frame rate for a minimal impact to image quality. It's definitely a feature we think is worth using in most cases, but this topic of input lag hasn't been explored too much, as it's a bit more difficult to test than just raw frame rate and image quality. The thinking that DLSS might increase input latency, I believe, comes from the experiences of competitive gamers using the tech in games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone, where often you might be gaming in a CPU-limited scenario with high frame rates. If you enable DLSS in those situations, there's a chance the feature either does nothing for your performance, or at best delivers a very minor improvement. With DLSS needing some amount of time to process and reconstruct the frame from a lower render resolution into the target resolution, I guess the thinking here is that this processing time, the added latency, may be impacting input latency and responsiveness more than you're getting from the improvement to frame rate. Going into this video, I wasn't really sure whether this was the case or not. I think the theory is sound, but you never really know how it plays out in practice until you get testing. Especially because NVIDIA doesn't really give too many details on their closed source black box technology, so it's a bit of a mystery, which means I need to get testing. In today's video, we'll be testing seven games, and I've enlisted the help of my AMD Ryzen 7 5800X test system, which is equipped with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card and 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 3200 memory. I also needed a low latency, high performance display, so I chose the Gigabyte Aorus Fi27Q-X, which provides 1440p 240Hz with adaptive sync and a processing delay less than 0.5 milliseconds. We'll also be testing at 1080p and 1440p today, with this monitor providing as few bottlenecks on that testing as possible. For actually testing latency, I'm using NVIDIA's Latency Display Analysis Tool, or LDAT for short. We've verified this tool to be as good as, if not better than, our other latency testing methods when we tested NVIDIA Reflex last year. So this isn't some NVIDIA BS tool that fakes data to make them look good. This is a very accurate device, which is perfect for this sort of testing and does help simplify the process of taking hundreds of latency measurements. I'll also note here that when testing DLSS latency, we've used the current in-game version of DLSS. We haven't manually replaced the DLL file to use DLSS 2.2 or anything like that. This is the current shipping version of DLSS in the games we're testing. Also, each game has been tested with at least a 50 sample average for each latency result. In some games, a 100 sample average, ammo permitting. We'll start the benchmarks with a look at Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. This is a pretty straightforward case of being GPU limited in most test scenarios, as we're testing using ultra settings, high ray tracing with reflections on, and variable rate shading of four times. What this means is that DLSS provides quite a substantial performance improvement, especially at 1440p, where we go from 130 FPS without DLSS to 180 FPS when using the DLSS quality mode. Input latency decreases in this game when using DLSS in line with the improvement to frame rate. At 1440p, we see a 38% and 65% increase to frame rate in the scene we tested using DLSS quality and performance respectively over native resolution. We then saw a 27% and 40% decrease to input latency with these DLSS modes. In other words, latency was 37% and 66% better when using DLSS which is almost exactly the same improvement we saw in frame rate. Similar story at 1080p. Frame rates improved by approximately 24% when using DLSS, with the performance mode running into a CPU limitation here as the render resolution was too low. In either case, we saw at least an 18% reduction in input latency, or a 22% improvement to responsiveness, showing that like at 1440p, DLSS has increased the frame rate and decreased latency as expected. 
In Watch Dogs Legion, we tested using ultra settings without ray tracing. In our test scenario, DLSS didn't provide a significant improvement to performance as the game isn't that GPU limited in the open world environment, thanks Ubisoft, especially at 1080p. However, at 1440p, DLSS did provide a 10-15% improvement to performance, which led to an 11-17% improvement in input latency. I don't think these results are the most exciting if I'm perfectly honest, so I'll move on to the next game. In Cyberpunk 2077, we're once again GPU limited here, even though we're only testing with high settings and no ray tracing. At 1440p, using DLSS quality led to a 26% performance improvement and a corresponding 16% reduction to input latency. Using DLSS performance, we saw 52% higher frame rates in our test area for 27% lower input latency. The improvement to latency wasn't as high as the improvement to frame rate, but nevertheless, DLSS was improving latency at 1440p. Similar story as you'll see from the 1080p data, we're not fully CPU limited here, so once again, DLSS did improve input latency, and especially when using the performance mode, latency was noticeably reduced. But of course, we're not just going to test AAA GPU limited titles, I've also tested some competitive games, the first of which is Fortnite. When using competitive settings, so that's everything on low except for render scale and draw distance, and with NVIDIA Reflex enabled, Fortnite is pretty much CPU limited even at 1440p, where the title is able to push out over 400 FPS. This is how most gamers who care about input latency would be playing this title. This is where DLSS input latency gets a little bit more interesting. At 1440p, DLSS actually reduces performance when you enable it, whether using the quality or performance modes. The overhead of using DLSS is higher than the benefit of reducing the render resolution, which makes sense as we're CPU limited, so reducing the resolution has next to no performance benefit. With DLSS reducing frame rates by 6%, latency was also impacted. However, the impact was very small at just 0.3 milliseconds at 1440p, or just a 3% increase. Unless you're an absolute beast for sensing latency differences, I find it hard to believe anyone would be able to notice a 3% difference to latency. At 1080p, the impact from DLSS was greater. In this situation, enabling DLSS quality saw an 8% reduction to frame rate and a 6% increase to input latency. What was interesting here is that despite the game running at exactly the same frame rate as at 1440p, input latency was lower without DLSS enabled at 1080p than at 1440p. I suspect this has to do with increased GPU side latency when rendering at a higher resolution, which you can actually see using the game's built-in frame rate readouts. Again though, despite being CPU limited and despite DLSS hurting the frame rate when enabled, the actual impact to latency is very small. It's not a situation where a small decrease to frame rate causes a huge increase in latency with DLSS enabled. The relationship is pretty similar and the impact on our test system was less than one millisecond. In Rainbow Six Siege using medium settings with a 100% render scale and reflex enabled, we're seeing very high frame rates once again. At 1440p, DLSS only provided a 7% performance improvement in the best case using the performance mode, and that was enough to improve input latency by 6%. The quality mode also led to a very small but measurable input latency improvement. At 1080p in this title, DLSS did provide a small performance improvement again, much to my surprise. However, there was virtually no latency benefit here. Using DLSS at 1080p didn't hurt input latency, but it also didn't improve input latency, so it's a bit of a neutral result. Call of Duty Warzone is by far the hardest game to test input latency in, and just a real nightmare for performance testing in general. But I did it anyway to provide these results because DLSS does have a bad reputation among the Warzone community, testing here using max settings without ray tracing. But the reason why DLSS has a bad reputation is more down to image quality than input latency based on these results. At 1440p, like in other titles, DLSS led to a small performance improvement, 5% when using the quality mode and 12% when using performance. This in turn improved input latency slightly, a 2% reduction using DLSS quality and 3% using DLSS performance. Using DLSS did not increase input latency in this situation. At 1080p, the story was a little different, as like we saw in Fortnite, using DLSS in this situation leads to a performance loss, as we're CPU limited even at 1080p without DLSS. A very small performance loss, mind you, most people would say these results are equivalent, but this led to a 3% increase to input latency. You'd be really hard pressed to notice the difference when gaming. Next up is Doom Eternal, another fast paced game which does benefit from low input latency. These results are once again pretty similar to other titles we've tested so far. 
at 1440p, Deal Assist can deliver up to a 12% performance improvement for up to a 10% improvement to input latency. Why such a small improvement from DLSS? Well, the game is already running at over 200 FPS natively in this scene we tested, so DLSS is biting up against CPU limits here. At 1080p, the perspective performance increases are even smaller at just a 9% increase in the best case using the performance DLSS mode. This was still enough of a performance increase to see a latency improvement of 5%, so while DLSS isn't doing a great deal here, it's also not negatively impacting latency through a large overhead. Lastly, I just wanted to look at the impact on input latency when using DLSS to improve frame rate versus in-game resolution scaling. We're back to Fortnite here using Epic settings now, and I've used the resolution slider to normalize performance to the two DLSS modes we've been testing. At 1440p, using the render scale does have a latency benefit. At the same level of performance, not using DLSS led to around a 1 millisecond improvement to input latency, in this case about a 5% improvement. However, at 1080p, where DLSS provides less of a performance improvement, the latency advantage to using just render scaling isn't really there, and using this method or DLSS provides roughly the same level of input latency. Also of note here is that unlike the previous results we looked at for Fortnite when CPU limited, now that we're more GPU limited using high quality settings, using either render scaling or DLSS consistently provided some sort of latency reduction. It's just a matter of to what level of an improvement you're getting. So now we have a pretty good answer to Brett's question from earlier on whether DLSS impacts input latency. The answer to this in most realistic use cases is going to be no. If DLSS is providing a performance increase, it's very likely you'll also be seeing a decreased input latency. The degree to which input latency improves is tied pretty closely to the rise in frame rate. The more DLSS can boost that frame rate, the more it will decrease input latency. But even when performance increases are small, typically you'll still see a small latency benefit as well. However, there are some edge cases where DLSS can hurt input latency. These are going to be when you're CPU limited, like we saw in Fortnite and Warzone. In these situations, DLSS doesn't provide any performance benefit as reducing the render resolution typically doesn't improve frame rates when CPU limited. In fact, performance can get worse due to the overhead of DLSS, leading to a small increase to latency in a couple of the scenarios we benchmarked, typically at 1080p using low settings. With that said, the overhead introduced by DLSS and the potential impact to latency is, well, it's pretty negligible. We're talking less than a one millisecond hit, which at high frame rates when CPU limited is usually less than 5%. To achieve this hit, you basically have to see a reduction to frame rate as well. So in that case, why would you even be using DLSS? If it's not increasing FPS, then all you're left with is a hit to image quality, which is especially noticeable at 1080p and 1440p, which are the only realistic resolutions where this performance hit could occur on today's hardware. In these situations, it's safe to say you shouldn't really be using DLSS anyway without even factoring in any latency implications. And that's really the crux of the situation with DLSS in competitive, latency-sensitive titles. Some of the time, DLSS will be useful, quality permitting of course. If your GPU limited, such as if you're using a lower-end GPU than the RTX 3080 we tested with, DLSS might be improving frame rate and therefore reducing latency. But with these titles, there's also a good chance DLSS won't be useful, as you'll be close to a CPU limit, and DLSS won't be improving performance by all that much. If it's not going to be improving performance, it's not going to be improving latency. To be honest, I think it's much more likely you'll see input latency affected by other settings and aspects to your setup than DLSS. If you're at all concerned about latency, it's always important to make sure you have a high refresh, low latency display that supports adaptive sync. And if you're not gaming within the refresh rate range, to disable vSync or use optimally tuned frame rate caps. Then on top of that, using low quality settings is usually the way to go, so you're not only getting lower latency from better performance, but also so enemies are easier to spot. I think DLSS latency really isn't much of a concern. So anyway, that's it for this testing. Thanks to the people that have been asking us to test this over the last couple of months. We have finally gotten to it, but now hopefully you have a pretty solid answer on DLSS input latency. If you're interested in supporting our testing, we do have our Floatplane and Patreon accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to early access videos if you are a Floatplane member. We also have our Discord community that's available to all the people that sign up. You can chat with us about various different things. Always a bit of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.